I'm not going to stand here in front of one of the great wonders of the world and argue about an old movie. I'll go back inside. If you figure out some plan to make 800 bucks last a lifetime, knock on the door. I'll be in there. You're listening to the Keeping Your Money Show with Jamie Westenbarger and Bart Steinler. All right, welcome back to Keeping Your Money Show. Jamie Westenbarger joined as always by Bart Steinler. We were talking about getting serious about retirement as you move into your 50s. If you miss any part of the show, you can always find it on our website. Just go to keepingyourmoney.com. You can also find it on all our podcast partners or just make sure you're listening when we're doing it and then you won't have to worry about it. You'll hear it right then. That's right. Great, do, great way to start Saturday morning. Yeah. I do want to um, remind everyone we are about a month away now from the fifth annual charity golf outing brought to you by the Keeping Your Money Show and Four Sills Financial. Thursday, July 26th, we'll be at Thornapple Point. Individual golfers, foursomes, sponsors, volunteers, um, all kinds of stuff still available. Uh, we've got a lot of sponsors lined up, but we could use a few more. If you want to golf, we'd love to have you. If you're a single golfer, we can we can pair you up with somebody. If you're a foursome, we can put your whole team out there. Um, go to keepingyourmoney.com for information on it, or give us a call 888 888- Nine eight money. It's a great time, chance to win a car, hole in one contest, close to the pen contest, longest drive, breakfast, lunch, the whole deal. So, lots of fun stuff. We have a great time every year with a hundred percent of the proceeds going to Kids Food Basket, which is an awesome organization. Uh, that I mean, they do they do a money. great job. They um, prepare sex suppers for children that are not likely to get dinner at home at night. They do it all year round, and what is it, seven thousand a day, or yeah, almost seven thousand a day in Kent County alone. Seven thousand a day, and if we hit our goal for this golf outing, and we really, really need your help, so I mean, whatever you can do is greatly appreciated. But if we hit our goal for this golf outing, that means that over five years we would have raised a hundred thousand dollars for Kids Food Basket. Yep, and it's really, it really is a big deal for us. That's a hundred thousand meals. A hundred thousand meals. That's pretty cool. For kids in in our area that probably would not have had dinner that those nights if they didn't get those meals. Yep. So, really appreciate it and uh, dig deep and come out and help us out on this golf outing. Yep, absolutely. That's July twenty sixth, uh, nine a.m. Thornapple Point Golf Course. Need more information? Like I said, go to the website keepingyourmoney dot com or give us a call eight 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 nine eight money. So, you maxed out your four hundred one k last year. Good job. Nice job. We we have people come in and say, well, I'm doing what I can. I maxed out my 401k. But CNBC had a good article out the other day about another way to save. And I wanted to add a couple to it, too, that I think a lot of times people forget about. You know, what, the problem is, Jamie, is that when, when uh, CNBC writes these articles, hmm. they don't ask you. To, I know. I to, keep telling them, just call me. I'll call help me, them out. And you could, you could help them out by giving them more information. It would have been a much better article. Right, right. So what they talk about in this article is HSAs. Now, a lot of people have HSAs with the move to much more higher deductible, um, you know, health insurance plans. We're seeing a lot more participation in HSAs, something that from 2006 to this year uh, has grown from uh, about $3 million to well over $53 million. Uh, So significant amount of, I'm sorry, billion dollars. Um, So a significant amount of people are putting money in HSAs now. But here's the thing. Stop spending them. Too many of you are using your HSA like the debit card to go buy your contact solution or to use for your copay. And here's what I'm going to say. There is a huge benefit to HSAs that's unlike almost anything else you can invest in. And that is there's no taxes on it going in. There's no taxes on the growth. And if used for medical expenses, there's no taxes on it coming out. It's triple tax free. So when you put the money in there and then you use it for a copay, you're missing out on the opportunity to potentially grow that asset and allow it to be a really important vehicle in your retirement. I mean, Fidelity figures that a couple, uh, a married couple retiring will spend $280,000 on medical expenses. Wouldn't it be awesome if when you retired, you had that in your HSA to be able to spend on medical expenses. I mean, or that would even be a, a huge good portion benefit. of it. If you're going into retirement thinking that you know you're pretty healthy and that's not going to happen, you're wrong. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Even yeah. if you are healthy. Even if you are healthy. healthy people have medical expenses. Right. And and you have insurance costs and things like that. So, you know, take advantage of this. You know, spend the 50 or $100 or, or whatever it is for your medical expenses that you have out of your pocket and let this tax-free money grow for you. It's just an excellent idea. And then as it starts to grow, companies are allowing you to now invest it. So they offer investment options for you to put this in. So it basically becomes a secondary retirement account that you can utilize for healthcare in the future. Now, the beauty of this is it doesn't have to be used for healthcare technically. You can use the money for any healthcare expense you've spent. So surgery, when you're 60, costs $2,000 deductible. You pay for it yourself because you have the money to do it. A year later, you're in a situation where you need to take a, a, some money out. You could take two grand out of your HSA and say that was a reimbursement to yourself for paying for that $2,000 deductible. That's allowed. So, you know, it gives you a lot more flexibility and a lot more options. And so many times we talk about asset allocation, right, as being mm -hmm. really important. But really tax allocation is important too. Having different pools of money you can pull from in retirement based on how they're going to be taxed can have a huge impact on how successful your retirement is. So here's an example. Your, um, your, your income in retirement is starting to get up to the point where it's going to bump you into the next tax bracket. And you need to draw more money out for whatever living expenses or whatever you want to do in retirement. And you have accounts that you can draw it out of, like a Roth account, where, it's, where it isn't going to add to your taxable income. Or you have this HSA account, which will do the same thing. So you bring the money out of the HSA account with, and you have it to spend, but it doesn't increase your taxable income at all. So it's a great solution for that. How about some other ideas, though? Is there another way that you, that you can have an account or a, sure. a, a way of saving money that, like, how about funding a Roth? Right. A lot of people think if they have a 401k, they can't also have a Roth. As long as you meet the income requirements, you are able to fully fund a 401k as well as fund your own Roth account. So don't think just because you're maxing out your 401k at work, you can't do a Roth. Here's another thing. If your spouse doesn't work, you can fund a Roth account for your spouse as well. So you could systematically be putting another $12,000 away for you and your spouse if your income allows you to do so. And what I mean by that is there are, of course, income limits on how much you can make while still funding a Roth. Now, also, isn't there a way if if my income limit takes me over the amount that allows me to fund a Roth, but I wanted to fund a Roth anyway, how would I go about doing that? So there's, there's two different ways. One is there's a backdoor way you can create a Roth. You basically create a non-deductible IRA, which you pay taxes on, then you convert it to a Roth, which you pay taxes on, but then it eventually has now become a tax-free account. So a little more complicated, Definitely want to sit down with a CPA and a financial advisor to determine if that makes sense for you. Uh, but it is a way to still find yourself in a Roth account. A second thing to think about is if you work for a company um, that allows for access contributions, excess contributions. Um, and what that simply means is go to your HR department and say, okay, look, I'm maxing out my 401k. Does the company allow me to put more money into my 401k? but not deduct it. So it would not come out pre-tax. So let's say you're maxing out your 401k, but you want to put another $20,000 a year in there. And your company says, yeah, we allow excess contributions. It just goes in after tax. And you might say, well, what's the benefit to me of doing that? Well, the IRS recently ruled that excess contributions in a 401k upon retirement can be rolled over into a Roth account, which means you're basically funding a Roth inside your 401k without it technically being a Roth until the day you retire. Now, caveat is IRS can always change their mind, uh, but there's not necessarily a negative of still having that money invested. Uh, and it could be a huge amount. If you think about the ability even to fund a Roth, you know, you're limited in how much that is. If you were able to put 20 or $30,000 in excess contributions in your 401k, maybe you just put the bonus in there for the next couple of years. You know, maybe you just put uh you know the the money that you were putting somewhere else it goes in there to have a couple hundred thousand dollars in a Roth account in retirement oh man I mean the flexibility that gives you the tax savings that potentially saves you because you're able to do that can be 
you know, it can be astronomical. It could be a huge difference. What a great idea. Well, I'll give you an example. We had a guy that came in. He had a 401k. And the 401k did not indicate that any of this money was, was after tax money. It was not good at showing what was actually going on there. And so uh, we're going to roll the 401k over for him. It's about $600,000. We call and talk to the 401k company. We've got everything set up. And the guy goes, well, well, do you just want the taxable? Do you just want the tax deferred and the non-deduct, non-tax deductible money all rolled together? And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's after-tax money in this? And he goes, yeah. And I said, and you're asking me if I want to roll that all into an IRA? No, I don't want to roll that all into that IRA. That would be a terrible idea. <laughs> I said, how much in there is not has not been tax deductible? What? How much of this is not, you know, a, is after tax money? And he says, well, about three hundred thousand. Now, now wrap your mind around the idea of if we had just rolled that into an IRA, every time that guy had taken a distribution, he would have paid his income tax bracket on that full distribution. But we effectively cut his taxes in half by taking half of that money that went in after tax, rolling that into a Roth account. So now he has almost an equal amount of money in a Roth account as he does in an IRA. So now in retirement, when he needs to make a $10,000 distribution, we can sit down with his CPA and determine where does it make the most sense from a tax standpoint to take this withdrawal for this guy. It could literally save him tens of thousands of dollars in taxes over his entire retirement. He did it accidentally. but He kind of stumbled into it. He did. And it was because of some stock options he'd been given way back when he started in the company. But, but the beauty of it is you can do that intentionally if your company allows it. So huge benefits, lots of other ways you can save. Don't just think I maxed out my 401k so I'm good to go. Um, Because that's not, that's just the beginning of the whole equation. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about a rule that you should definitely think about when it comes to your retirement savings right here on the Keeping Your Money Show. There's no one size fits all when it comes to planning your future. Jamie, Bart, and all of the advisors at the Keeping Your Money Show understand that your financial goals are unique and your needs are going to change at varying stages of your life. Our team of advisors can help you tailor a financial plan that meets your unique needs. Call us today at 1-888-98-MONEY or visit KeepingYourMoney.com to schedule your free initial consultation. Come alive with the forest. Visit DiscoverTheForest.org to find a forest near you. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council.